Uh, the title of your book is A God That Could Be Real. Could you explain for our audience um, why you chose that title and how it speaks to the problems and questions that animated you as you wrote the book? A God That Could Be Real is a, a theory of God <clears throat> that I am basically offering. I'm not telling anybody what to believe, but this is a way of thinking about God that helped me recover from an addiction when I could not believe in any normal kind of a God or any traditional kind of a God because I have a scientific background. I started out not believing in any kind of God, and I found that I needed something to connect me to my sense of purpose, but it had to work for me. So I have put together an idea, originally for my own good, but it turns out it's valuable to a lot of other people, of an idea of God that is completely consistent with science, but very personally empowering too. So you talk about um, coming up with an idea that's consistent with science. Can you talk about the joint work that the two of you had done and how um, your teaching together to different audiences about science has played into how Joel your ideas is, evolved? Yes, Joel is one of the world leaders in cosmology and he can tell you what his uh, theory is about how the galaxies formed and why they have the shapes that they do, something nobody understood before. Mm -hmm. And it's he's been working on this for 30 years, our entire married life. It had a huge impact on me. What, it, what was the argument of that first book, The View from the Center of the Universe? Well, uh, it presented the modern picture of the universe uh, in many different ways, from the point of view of size, of what it's made of, of how it operates. And in, in every case, what we tried to do was put humans into the picture, uh, which is rather different from the way most academic uh, uh, treatments uh, discuss the universe. The kind of stuff that we're made of basically elements heavier than hydrogen and helium mostly, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, a few heavier elements like sulfur and iron. Uh, that represents about a hundredth of one percent of the universe, of the stuff of the universe. Most of the universe isn't even made of atoms or the parts of atoms. Most of the mass is a mysterious thing we call cold dark matter. We know how it behaves but we don't know what it is. And even more of the cosmic density is an even more mysterious thing that we call dark energy. That's what makes the universe expand faster and faster. So we are a very tiny, tiny fraction of the universe. Everything we can see, all the stars and glowing gas clouds, is about half a percent, one half of one percent. So it's a bizarre universe. No one imagined that it was anything like this. But the evidence is overwhelming. Whenever we gave the hundreds of talks that we've given based on our books uh, to public audiences, uh, one of the questions that always came up was, where does God fit into this picture? Mm. And that's, I think, what inspired Nancy to think very hard about that. And she came up with the ideas in her new book, A God That Could Be Real. Yeah, let's talk more about that idea because you use science in a really imaginative way in this book, which is you turn to the science of emergence as a way to think about and offer a new conception of God. Can you describe uh, briefly what the um, emergence is and how it gave you the ideas or the way to think about God? Yes, emergence is a concept from complexity theory. And the basic idea is that when there are many parts of any kind of a system that are interacting in extremely complex ways, if you step back and you look at the thing as a whole, something larger emerges something that is not implicit in the nature of the things that are moving around. It doesn't arise from that nature. It arises from the complexity of the interactions. Mm -hmm. Well, we humans, the best part of us is our aspirations. And our aspirations interact with the other people's aspirations and with the aspirations of our ancestors, and that will affect the aspirations of our descendants. And the incredibly complicated interactions of our aspirations must by the laws of science, be creating something on a larger scale. And what if that is God? What if we think of that as God? I'm not saying that is God. I'm saying what happens if we start thinking of that as God? What can that do for us? So can you talk about how thinking of God through the lens of emergence in this way can help us help humanity find common ground to address future global challenges? Yes, because right now uh, there are so many different versions of God 
And the sad thing is, everybody thinks their God is universal. Their God created the universe. And if your God is different, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. And maybe you're dangerous, and maybe I should fight with you. That has been the history of the last few centuries, at least. What we really need, because we're facing global problems that cannot be solved by any group or any even group of countries, what we really need is some kind of common ground that we all can accept. And the idea of a God that emerges from all people and all the uh, interacting aspirations of all of us is a really interesting foundation for a common ground idea. And I'm certainly not saying everybody has to believe this. Mm. Belief is completely beside the point as far as I'm concerned. We need to act like scientists. When you are trying to figure out a theory, you don't believe the theory. It's a theory. You're trying to understand it. You tr but you can't understand it unless you give it a chance to be real in your mind. And that's what I'm trying to do with this. Now, a lot of people have said to me, well, don't call it God. Just, you have this concept of an emergent phenomenon. Call it something else. Call it the force. Call it whatever. And from my own point of view, I feel very, very strongly that we have to take back the concept of God and redefine it because that concept holds enormous power for lots of people. Thank you very much for your time. We have Nancy Ellen Abrams and Joel Premack. Um, Abrams' book is A God Who Could Be Real, and we encourage you to read the book um, and enjoy it as much as we did.